ladies and gentlemen, it is Tanko Bear, Colbert Tech Repair, where you get everything tech, news, gaming, and nerd related. And today we have a APU review. It is the AMD A10 7850K. Now, I put this on my test bench. Uh, the, the motherboard I'm using is the MSI A88X-E35. I am running Windows 8.1 with the current 4.1 um, beta catalyst drivers for Mantle. And I'm running it with the Hyper 212 Evo um, CPU cooler because I did not want to take the Noctua off of my Sabertooth bench. So this is on a micro ATX board. Uh, some of the features of the A10, it has a level one cache of 192 kilobytes for the code and 64 kilobytes for the data. Um, it is FM2 plus instead of FM2 and is 95 watts TDP. Now this does only have four cores with four threads, but it does have the integrated APU and the integrated APU is an R7 series graphics card. And it has 512 shaders and it has a base clock of 720 megahertz. Now, also on my test bench, I have 1600 megahertz of um, or 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz Corsair Vengeance RAM, but the A10 7850K supports up to 2133 megahertz RAM, so keep that in mind. So, I'm gonna throw up a little graphic here. What I did was, I did some, um, a little bit of benchmarking with Prime 95, and with Prime 95, my idle temperature with the, um, 750, 7850K on the stock temperatures was 34 degrees Celsius. Very respectable. Now I loaded up Prime 95 on the basic settings and it ran for about 15 minutes and I reached 52 degrees Celsius. Now from here I ran Valley Benchmark. I ran the basic Valley Benchmark which basically runs it at medium settings and the frames per second I got was 22.7 and the score was 90 or 949 now after that I decided well I'll see how far I can push this so the base clock of the um, A10 is 3.7 megahertz and I overclocked the GPU to 960 megahertz so here are the temps I got from that on idle at actually excuse me I overclocked to 4.3 megahertz at idle my temps were 34 degrees and at, at prime on load I hit the the max recommended temperature mark which was 72 degrees but I had zero errors after 15 minutes so I had no problems there um, then I decided I would run valley with the new settings and I actually did get some gains. Um, my frames per second went up to 25 frames per second, and my score went up to 1,052 megahertz. So I did see a gain here. Now keep in mind, this is just using the onboard graphics. You can also, with this chip, you can use a R7 or R9 card in the PCI slot, and you can run what they call dual graphics. It's basically a pseudo crossfire which uses the um, the integrated graphics on the APU and the graphics card to run in tandem with each other in a pseudo crossfire fashion. I plan on getting a R7 or R9 series card very soon to try and see what the differences are there. So why would you want to get an APU? Well for one they are very good for micro ATX boards. Um, they're, you can fit them into small systems. If you're just wanting something simple that can just do basic tasks, play simple games on low to medium settings, uh, such as Battlefield 4 Crisis, so like that, you should be perfectly fine with the A10-7850K. Now, if you wanted to add to that with a R7 or R9 series card, you are looking at a huge gain in your graphic fidelity. Um, I would highly recommend this. Uh, it surprised me. I mean, in my main gaming rig, I use the FX8350 because I do render videos for YouTube and I do gaming. 
So that's why I use that in my main gaming grip rig instead of an APU. But in my test bench, I had no problems with the APU. Um, it ran perfectly fine. The drivers were very easy to install. So if you are a light to medium duty gamer that just wants to get a CPU and APU in one solid package without having to go out and purchase an additional graphics card to do some low to medium settings graphics. Now, you can't go high to ultra on this, on just the APU. But if you want to do some low to medium settings graphics, and you just want an all-in-one thing, I can highly recommend the A10 7850K. Um, it makes it very easy to work with, it's very easy to install, and it's at a very good price point at under $200. Now, as I was saying, if you would like better performance, you can go with the APU option and add on a AMD R7 or R9 series card with the new Mantle support, and you will see gains there. I have seen gains of 10 to 15% with Mantle online um, from using a AMD card in tandem with the APU. So, guys, this has been my review of the AMD A10 7850K APU. If you have any questions about anything, please feel free to comment down in the comment section below. I would also like to know, do these APUs excite you? Do you think you would ever use one in your main gaming build? Um, if you have any other questions, just let me know. If you liked, give it a like. If you didn't, feel free to give it a dislike. You can also find me on Twitter at TanColbert92, and you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Colbert Tech Repair. See you guys next time.